Hey everybody, welcome to the Level Up Leadership Podcast. My name is Mike Delgado. My name is Patty Guevara. This podcast is designed to help you get to know the leaders here at Experian and also gain insight into the leadership skills and traits needed to grow our careers. In this podcast, we'll talk mentorship, career navigation, handling rejection, work-life balance, mental health, diversity and inclusion, and so much more. A lot of our recordings are done through WebEx, so sometimes the audio quality is not perfect. We apologize. We'll get better in time, uh, but we hope you get a lot of information out of these shows. We certainly have. Today, we're speaking with Jimmy Chung, SVP of Technology and Engineering for Experian Consumer Services North America. Jimmy is also the executive co-sponsor for our Asian American Employee Resource Group here at Experian. Jimmy, if you can just start us off by describing your educational and professional background for us and how you got to Experian. Yeah, sure. Um, I uh, graduated from uh, California State University, uh, both my undergrad and graduate degree in uh, economics. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was one of those unfortunate things that, uh, so I can definitely relate with the, uh, the current uh, unemployment uh, uh, picture because when I graduated back in 92, it was one of the, uh, the, the worst uh, uh, employment um, uh, markets uh, um, um, of the decades or even prior decade. So, so um, I, I was, uh, um, wasn't able to find any work uh, in the economics uh, world, and I, but, but uh, I was fortunate enough that I was uh, starting to get um, um, uh, involved with technology. And, uh, and, and, and as, I, as I start doing that, um, I wrote the uh, the dot com boom, you know, into into, uh, into the tech space. So uh, um, I've uh, I've held on to uh, technology for almost uh, been working in this field now for uh, twenty plus years, and uh, I came over to Experian uh, because of uh, Joe Manna. Uh, Joe Manna uh, was hired uh, by Experian about five years ago, and uh, Joe Manna and I've been working together for almost sixteen. Years and uh, oh, wow. and we were uh, I worked for Joe uh, 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 and, and two other with two other companies uh, uh, both companies in the uh, event ticketing industry uh, we worked at uh, uh, Tickets.com and also uh, Live Nation Ticketmaster so that's kind of how uh, I got connected with uh, Experian. Your move from because you got your degrees in, in econ, correct. And then what what made you shift into the tech space? Well, first of all, the uh, availability of jobs. When uh, I like I alluded to earlier, when I first graduated, and, and my focus in economics was in real estate. And unfortunately, in the oh. early nineties, it was just a really depressed uh, real estate market. So uh, I really had to uh, 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 pivot and uh, adapt to uh, uh, any kind of. Uh, of an industry, a sector that that uh, that that had more uh, job growth. So, uh, um, and technology, even in, in recession, seems to be the uh, the segment that that has the uh, the higher gro- uh, uh, job opportunities. So that's that's what I made the change into uh, technology. Um, and 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 uh, it was it was just serendipitous that that uh, uh, I made the transition. Um, really got involved with technology. And the dot com boom hit, so it just propelled me into uh, more opportunities that was in technology. And technology is such a uh, dynamic field; there's so many different facets to it. So uh, um, I, I really, I really enjoy this uh, this uh, segment and uh, and the challenges technology offers. So uh, yeah, so, so it was a really, uh, I say, easy and a successful uh, transition for me from uh, economics to. And, and I'll be honest, um, the economic uh, of training and, and the, uh, the, the cognitive thinking that's required for, uh, for, uh, um, um, for, for an economist, those skills are very uh, transferable to any, uh, any individual. You said that you worked with Joanna at a few different companies. Can you speak to some of the leadership qualities in Joe or even other people around you that have inspired you to be the leader you are today? Sure, sure. Um, specifically with Joe, uh, um, what, what I really uh, uh, admire in Joe is his uh, ability to be uh, um, objective. And, and I always say it's uh, uh, um, um, Joe's, Joe's colorblind in a good way. 
You know, he really doesn't care about, you know, your, your, your race, doesn't care about your gender or whatever it may be. He just, he just focuses on your uh, performance, your ability. And he's, uh, he's shown me those qualities consistently in the 16 years that I worked with him. He's very uh, demanding. You know, most of you guys know Joe. He's uh, extremely demanding in terms of uh, the type of uh, um, a performance and output he wants from his leaders. And, but he's fair about it. And what I like about his, uh, his empathy. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's one of those leaders that really uh, um, that's sincere about empathy in, in, in his shows. And um, that, that's one of the, the qualities that, uh, that uh, um, traits, I should say, that I really uh, want to uh, um, adapt to go. Um, in terms of other leaders or other uh, role models I have, I would say I, uh, one of the strongest, the, the, the one that, that really uh, um, served me all my life is my father. Mm-hmm. My father is one of the, uh, the, the greatest role models I've ever had. Um, and, and I think some of you are aware that I'm an immigrant to this country. And uh, um, my, my father had to make a choice to uh, immigrate us to this country uh, because he, you know, he knows that he's going to, by doing that, he's going to give my sisters and I a much better life and a much better uh, opportunity for our career growth. But at his age, where uh, that decision needed to be made, uh, you know, he knows that he's not going to be able to have a job, um, a white collar job like that he, does, uh, he had back in Hong Kong. Um, so, so he, he he came over here, and something I, I I've always uh, um, um, noticed in my father is it doesn't matter if he's the uh, the, the manager of a shoe factory in Hong Kong versus you know a busboy or a prep chef in the U.S. He's always the best of that. Mm. You know, he's always the best the best manager, the best busboy, the best yeah. chef. You know, and and he did it with, uh, you know, he did it with passion, and he did it, uh, you know, he did it uh, without without any kind of bitterness, and uh, he just he he never really actually ever boast about any of that stuff. You know, my dad's always uh, uh, one of those guys that, that that lacks emotion, but it's all about just his uh, his uh, action. Mm-hmm. So so um, that's 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 the kind of leader that I try to be. A, 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 a person that I try to be, and I feel that that's been uh, one of the, uh, the the strongest, strongest uh, of influence uh, 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 for me. Right. You said that your dad knew he wasn't going to have the same white collar job he would have back in Hong Kong um, when he moved here. And I know you said he wasn't bitter about it or anything, but did you ever feel a pressure to make it because he gave up so much for his family? And if you did, how did you kind of move past that and um, make sure you did succeed? Yeah. Um, def- first of all, Patty, definitely. Without a doubt, I mean, uh, um, um, and that pressure was was not nothing he ever said is is for me to go to uh, my dad's restaurant, right? Uh, Ultra shock for me is to see my dad he used to be the, uh, the, the 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 king of the the the, 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 the factory, uh, right. where everybody just you know just just admire my dad, praise and, and really uh, really uh, um um. um, um Looked at him as a uh, as a uh, uh, um, as a superior to you know in, in the restaurant busting busting uh, dishes, and I knew just that. I knew what what the sacrifices he made. So I, I, my sister and I, we, we applied a lot of pressure um, um, on ourselves, and, and, uh, and that's not unique. Uh, uh, any yeah. that I feel uh, I would have to say, especially Asian immigrants, is something that's innate in our culture. And it's about you know, if eating bitter to, uh, to yourself so your your uh, your uh, offspring can have a better life, and that's just kind of ingrained into you know generations and generations of our uh, of our DNA. And uh, yeah, I, I I definitely feel that you know that that, that pressure. Right. Um, while we're on the topic, I would love to talk about something that you mentioned before, and I'm hoping you can explain it to our listeners, but um, something you said that always resonated with me in the past was that it's not always about your IQ. Sometimes you have to really focus on your EQ. And um, can you talk a little bit more to that and explain what you meant by that and how someone might be able to kind of intentionally focus on bettering their EQ? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we... we um, 
and, and I'm going to use technology uh, as a uh, as a, 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 a career as an example. Uh-huh. Is that when you first start in technology, your IQ, your technical knowledge, is is is, is very important. That's going to really sort of, of, of separate you or distinguish you from the others. You know, your ability to solve problems, the ability to be creative in terms of the type of coding you're doing or any of the technical tasks you're doing. But as you start advancing um, the, uh, 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 the, the career ladder, you're going to um, hit a, hit a, a function where you're going to have to make a choice that if I want to uh, uh, grow in the uh, managerial aspects of technology, do I want to stay technical? Um, but if you want to grow from a managerial uh, of, of perspective, meaning that you want to become uh, a director, uh, a vice president, um, 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 the CTO, your your IQ becomes less important. Your EQ is is now uh, the, the 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 quality or the uh, the, the trait that you're going to be evaluated on. You know, is your ability to be able to bring success. Okay, not necessarily using your your intelligence, but using your emotional intelligence to be able to bring success among others on your team because you can't do it yourself. You know, because right. when you're in those positions, you're really there to, to be the catalyst to be able to bring success to the company by the results of the group. Um, and that's a challenging skill, especially when you think about in technology, you always uh, have been graded on your uh, intelligence, your IQ, and, and I think that's, that's where a lot of, um, you'll see a lot of, of, of failures where um, promotions are done based on those qualities. And, and then you put them into a, 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 a leadership role, and they don't have the, uh, the emotional intelligence. And uh, then all of a sudden, wow, this person that used to be uh, a five, you know, as an engineer, they're, they're now barely making it as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a director or a, or a, or a vice president. So I, I, I feel that, um, and it's not just, I mean, I, I think, I think the, uh, the enterprise um, really sort of a, 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 a Miss, miss uh, this uh, step here is that you look at all the training that most uh, uh, companies provide for their employees. It, it's really there to uh, increase and augment their uh, their, their uh, uh, intelligence, or, uh, IQ, or their technical skills, or or so forth. But you look at how much investment companies make in terms of programs or training to to elevate um, um, individuals' EQ. You know, it's, it's just not it's not there, right? And and I think Patty Patty was in one of my talks where I talked about um, McKenzie. Uh, they did a, a survey um, across, and it, it, it took it, the survey took about I think almost ten years for them to do. It's to measure um, the business success of, of companies and what's attributing to that business success. And what they what they defined is that eighty five percent of business success is attributed to. EQ, mm. not IQ. Mm. But mm. You, you think about what I said about the sort of the business investment in training, you have probably the, the opposite. Yeah. 80% of that is geared towards the IQ and the, the, the technical knowledge. So I think that pendulum or that 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 that, that scale really needs to kind of uh, kind of be tipped and and uh, um and, and I, th- I think Experian is starting to uh, really realize that, and you're seeing that through our our master course and some of the uh, the, the high performance training that we're we're starting now to to really uh, understand the power the power of uh, of EQ, and and it's encouraging to see that the company's making in, making the right investment in the, in terms of uh, training its human capital. Right. When we first talked about this, it was in the context of the Asian community being more susceptible to this problem than most just because we were raised to be like, hey, get straight A's, you're going to be tapped on the shoulder and you'll be chosen to move up. You don't need to like do anything do anything else just work really hard right but i feel like that's an issue with like beyond the asian community so like it, like you said in technology there's a huge focus on iq and whatnot so this is something anyone can benefit from i'm wondering if you have any tips for people who are trying to expand their eq like any intentional things they can do to be better at that yeah, and, and, and I think I think the good news about EQ versus IQ is that you're born with your IQ. 
Right. You know, you're, you're, it's, very, it's very hard to be able to, to go from, you know, 100 to, uh, to uh, 260 on a, on a Mensa exam. So, so I, I, but the good news with EQ is you can absolutely learn to grow your EQ. And, and what I would start off with is, is uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, different uh, literature that's, that's, that's out there that addresses uh, EQ. I would first is, is uh, you know, go to uh, any of the, the you know, the, the Amazon books or whatever it may be, any of it, and start just uh, searching for uh, any kind of material uh, relating to EQ. And, and, and then you're going to find a, a, a whole, whole uh, a lot of references on things like, uh, you know, um, 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 Situational leadership, uh, things like that, all of those kind of things that that really uh, uh, are part of uh, that that new uh, framework. So, so I would say uh, start with that, and uh, and look also um, experience uh, training site has a lot of different uh, curriculums uh, or a lot of different uh, um, classes, and then there is a category that's specifically on uh, on topics and subjects like EQ. So uh, I think th- those those two uh, you don't have to really go out and, and search for a, sort of a expensive classes or anything like that. I think that it's more valuable to really take us uh, uh, just uh, you know a, a couple of those uh, um, uh, books or, or training, and the key is start practicing it. You know, I mean, and, it, and it's easy. You know, and, and some of the things that literally is, you know, they, they call it a uh, one second of the success is what the uh, athletes usually use the uh, use the term is. You know, when, when you're listening to people or when you're ready to say something, the one second of success means that. Pause for a second, and, and and then you know speak because a lot of times here's a interesting principle about me too is that you know your your uh, um, um, your senses what you touch and what you process right that hits a certain part of your brain in front of your emo or, or, or behind your emotions your cognitive your your your, uh, your processing goes behind the, the emotional element of it so. If you take a second, a uh, pause a second, you know, a lot of times you might not say the thing that you want to say. But if someone cuts you off, you want to do something immediately, pause for a second, and then look around the, the, the environment. Maybe there's a reason why that person uh, uh, cuts you off, because he's trying to uh, dodge from hitting a, uh, a, uh, a pedestrian or something like that. So those are the kind of things that, that I think that, you know, those speak that you, you, you digest the, the literature and the training out there and start pra- practicing it and get good, good at it. And, you know, I've been, I've been trying to, I've been doing that for 20 years in my life. And I'm like, I still have a lot, a lot of areas that I can improve on. Kimmy, I wonder if you can share a little bit about maybe some of those EQ skills you worked on or have helped others uh, as you've mentored people around EQ. Uh, one of the strongest, strongest, uh, I, I feel the, the tool um, in, in my uh, EQ uh, tool belt is the uh, situational leadership. And what situational leadership means is that there's there's actually a a, a very empirical model that uh, that's been developed on this in the subject area on where you uh, assess an individual's uh, uh, technical aptitude and their ability to uh, perform and based on that um, 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 uh, based on that uh, uh, criteria, you apply a certain type of leadership quality. You know, like for example, uh, if someone just started in the, in the business, you might have to do a, 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 a provide a more a, a directive, direct directive uh, type of, uh, of of management style versus someone that's been here for a while that knows what he's doing, that has the desire to execute, that's more of a, uh, you know, a delegation type of a management style, right? The key there is you don't want to have one size fits all. I think that's that's the biggest sort of uh, pitfall a lot of managers get into is, you know, they, they always think of, you know, um, Susan's okay with my management style. Why isn't Ralph okay to do with my management? So, so it's not it's not up to the employees to change their style to accommodate their leadership style. As a leader, it's up to you to understand that particular individual's uh, of, of aptitude and desire to execute. Then you go back to your tool belt and say, "Oh wow, I need to be more uh, 
and tutorial. I need to be more uh, of a mentor and coaching style. Oh, this guy, all I need to do is delegate because he already knows everything, right? Because because, uh, um, <laughs> because it's important because if you become too yeah. sort of tutorial to someone that's been here for five or ten years, bang, you're, you're going to have it too, right? So, so it's not like, you know, the you always hear is like, you know, it's, it's not like different strokes for different folks. It's different strokes for the same folk, depending on where they are, when they're uh, in their, uh, in their career development or, or their knowledge. Look like it. Jimmy, I, you know, I think um, when you're managing like a very small team, uh, you can spend a lot of time getting to know your team. Uh, you can have great one-on-ones and that can be very helpful when you're managing someone because you kind of know what motivates them um, just because you get to, you know them intimately. But it, that becomes really, really hard as your teams get bigger. And I'm wondering, like, how does that situational leadership work as it gets more difficult, as you have more people to manage? Yeah, you, you got to be able to scale. So what you start out with, I mean, even in, in, in my role right now, I mean, I have close to 140 employees. Wow. What, what I start off with is start with your directs and then skip level first. And what I mean by that is that um, if you haven't, as a leader, um, a, a team of any size have had one-on-ones, at least, you know, one. And, and if it's through directs, I would say those need to be at least monthly, right? And and, and I would start off with, with that population first to really get to know know uh, that, that uh, 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 your directs and also your skip level directs. And oh. and uh, once, once you do that, then what you could do is you could probably even get deeper, uh, lower down the, uh, the, the, the ladder and just try to do like, you know, I'm going to pick uh, once a month. I'm going to spot and, and then pick some of the individual contributors to understand them, right? You can't do them all. It's like any any uh, any kind of a survey is, is about sampling, right? So you should, you, you, if you do this uh, consistently and you do, let's say, hey, you know what? I'm going to talk to an individual contributor, at least one every month. You're going to get a good uh, understanding across the board how well the managers are, 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 uh, are managing those individuals. And then you have a more frequent one-on-ones with your directs and your skip level. Then you're going to understand you know, how they're growing, where they are in their, uh, in their uh, um, 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 vocational uh, maturity ladder. And then, and then you're going to see, okay, you know what? Uh, you start talking to them, you understand how your skip level uh, of, of employees, how they're interacting with their directs, their, their manager, right? And then you kind of get a, a snapshot of how those guys are managing those people. And then and then once you do that, then you got to provide that feedback loop back to your directs. Because I always, I, I'm a firm believer in process and, 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 a, and a chain of command is I will I will talk to my directs and, and, and have them have them execute the uh, uh, optimizations and the improvements based on the feedback that I've gathered to them. And then, and then I will, I will keep them accountable, right? To, to a result based on my feedback. And what I expect them to do is to make sure that they push down to their directs, which I'm going to be checking on them because I, <laughs> I, I tell them, I tell them up front that, Hey, I have skip levels with, uh, with your, uh, with, uh, with all my employees. So they know. I didn't even heard that term skip bubble before. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty common term. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's amazing that uh, when you tell your directs that, uh, hey, I'm going to have skip level one on ones uh, with your uh, with your employees. Um, even if you you haven't had ever done one, uh, they all of a sudden are a lot more uh, uh, conscientious and they're 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 a lot more uh, 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 focused on making sure that hey, you know what? Some of the things that I'm talking about, Jimmy's talking about in these meetings, man. I'm going to make sure I'm communicated down just because he's spot checking, right? I mean, that's the whole idea, right? So, so uh, um, yeah, so so it, it works. I mean, and, and look, I wish these are all the things that I've uh, I've I've seen other uh, great managers and uh, um, 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 other other uh, other uh, uh, people uh, within even the Asperian uh, that that are uh, that are doing this. I would love to know what situational leadership looks like to you in the age of COVID-19 and how you're overseeing your team and the skip levels now, now that we're all working from home. 
Yeah, I have to say definitely, Patty, that um, I'm, a, I'm a very uh, sort of a, a, a people kind of a person. Like when I say by that is I love to, love to inter- interact with people face to face, face to face kind of a person. So uh, uh, in this kind of a COVID environment, it's, it's definitely taken, uh, you know, some of my, uh, my, uh, my ability to do that. But it, 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 it didn't, it didn't uh, sort of uh, remove my uh, time commitment. Uh, to to meet with those uh, those individuals, I still do those one on ones, but now I'm doing it through uh, WebEx, you know, and and unfortunately sometimes it's audio only because the video is not working very well, right. and, and and even like right now, you know, we're not we're not getting a lot of the uh, the energy, you know, a lot of the the, 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 the sort of the, yeah. the interactions and the benefits of being yeah. at, in person, and uh, yeah, but but you still got to do it, you know, and and we know that. Um, our work environment from COVID might not may not ever go back to what, what, what it was before, right? We're going to have to adapt to some uh, some modifications to the way we used to work. So uh, um, I would say that uh, um, we need to we need to look at ways to uh, to uh, um, you know sort of improve the, the mediums that we have now, and but at the same time that shouldn't uh, completely um, um, impede you. From, uh, from utilizing tools and methods like you know situational leadership uh, um, on, on those uh, those uh, um, um, those those, uh, those, those uh, type of uh, tools or, or practices from your uh, from your uh, tool belt. Yeah, I, I also I love uh, like on Patty like I love like being around people. I love seeing Patty in the office. Like I really miss those times because there's so much happens like all the nonverbal communication and just being in the same room being able to shake a hand like i miss all of that but i'm even thinking about how we're talking about like when we do return to the office during covid like we'll all have masks and like that is like also hindering like Mm -hmm. having to wear a face even when i go to the market like i'm smiling you know to people but they have no idea that i'm smiling (laughs) like they just have a sense of is this person happy? Are they sad? You know, and that's going to be the hard thing. I think when we do return to the office and we're all wearing face masks, like, yeah, I'm going to miss out on a ton of nonverbal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to find ways. I think we're going to have to find ways to, uh, to, uh, sort of compensate for that, uh, lack of, uh, lack of, uh, uh telemetry, so to speak. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, uh, maybe, maybe it's going to be a lot more, uh, uh, and I'm sure that that there's going to have to be some kind of uh, uh, dine-in options. You know, maybe some of that talk will, will just have to be done over food in a restaurant or something like that. Because you know, you can't have a face mask. <laughs> right, right. That's right. So, uh, yeah. So, so we're going to have to be creative. <laughs> I think what's interesting is that this whole work from home thing has kind of—I don't know about you guys—but I feel like it's forcing people to be more vulnerable with each other. Like when you ask each other, like, "How are you doing?" you don't get the oh I'm fine like water cooler talk it's more like oh like I'm having a hard time working from home or you know things are hard and I'm like trying to cope so I feel like even if there might be that barrier when we get back Uh I feel like enough of us have been vulnerable with each other that like we'll have that connection when we get back to the office hopefully I don't know that's me like looking at this over like Yeah, because I agree, Patty, because, uh, you know, I, I have to say this is one of the, the rare sort of uh, uh, um, video conferencing uh, uh, sessions that I've done where I'm so well dressed. <laughs> normally, normally, normally uh, you know, I, I, I have, a, you know, a T-shirt or a basically a slash pajama top, you know, and, and, and my hair is like ching, 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 ching everywhere. So I, I actually put some hair gel. And for <laughs> this particular session, so uh, so um, I have to agree. When you start seeing people in that type of uh, you know condition, so to speak, mm-hmm. you almost feel like you're 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 now sort of uh, uh, beyond just being uh, having a a, a, a a professional relationship, right? Uh-huh. You're almost now a personal relationship with these folks. You're you're seeing them in a, to your point, a, a sort of this vulnerability, sort of a very uh, sort of a you know non business like uh, type of. Uh, 
uh, decor and, and appearance. And then sometimes I see dogs running around, running yeah. across <laughs> the cameras. The, the kids are little, little their, their kids running around. And, and you, it, it really puts, a, 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 I think, a, a, a touch of uh, personalization. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're all sort of, uh, we're all humans now, right? Even Ty, you know, I mean, even Ty's dog's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so, so I think we're all sort of now are like a lot more sort of uh, 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 in touch and, and, and on, a, on the level, I think, uh, parody yeah, with right. everybody now. Right. That's right. I mean, we always talk about bring your whole self to work, and that yeah. is definitely the case right now. We are all at bring home. Bring like, to home. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, God. Now, now it's more like bring your whole home to work. You know, I think that's a whole yeah. different story. It's not even your whole whole self. It's like you're bringing your uh, you know your entourage and and, and, and animals. Yeah, bring your pet. <laughs> and everyone else who's quarantining with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, Patty, like you're saying, like I'm finding like I will jump on a call with somebody, and normally that call would be like a couple minutes with a friend just to catch up really quickly. Now it's turning into like what I thought would be a five minute call, like sometimes an hour, hour and a half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm definitely seeing more uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, more inter- group interactions now because it's so much so easy, so much, uh, you know, easier now to get like a, uh, a group's uh, Zoom or a, a group uh, uh, ha- or virtual happy hour through WebEx or whatever uh, the, uh, the the collaboration platform is. And, and now I'm seeing that not only with with uh, with work, but with my families. You know, I, I'm seeing more of uh, in a way that the COVID situation actually has brought more, uh, more uh, um, um, of these type of, uh, of, 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 of touch points or interactions with, uh, with, with uh, my families more than uh, used to, where, where the only option before was like, I need to make a drive all the way out to, uh, you know, my parents or, or, or my, my in-laws house or whatever. Now it's like, everybody's okay getting together, you know, ad hoc and, 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 and you know, across the country over uh, over a uh, um, uh, video conferencing so I, I think there's uh, there's definitely uh, some uh, some positive aspects of this in terms of bringing people closer not only uh, you know at work but just, just with their families we've talked yeah. a lot about um, Mike and I have talked a lot about what work will look like once we come back like it feels like work from home will be a big option for a lot of people now just because we've seen the capabilities of working from home I would love to know personally for you what do you think about your leadership style will be different because of COVID-19 once we return to whatever the normal world (laughs) will look like yeah well, I have to say that the uh, the large in person meetings are definitely going to have to change, and, and they're going to probably have to modify. And that that uh, um, that 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 is a uh, um, um, a very powerful a powerful uh, tool and uh, a capability for uh, a, a lot of leaders is just to be able to have. Uh, uh, all hands, you know, the, 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 the VP, the VP uh, standups every week where you have a large group of folks that you're, you're, you're interacting in person to, uh, to uh, go over all of the different, you know, uh, initiatives and, and uh, what's going on with the, with the company and all that. So that's, that's going to be tough uh, for us. Sustain. So I, I still don't know how how uh, so the the surrogate uh, for that is going to be for, at this point. But uh, that's that's one uh, one uh, sort of one uh, aspect. I think that, that that's definitely going to have to change. And even smaller meetings. I think people are people are going to be you know when you have to sort of maintain that social distancing and all of that. I think uh, I think it's going to affect people to, to in terms of you know their their willingness to want to do yeah. meetings, you know, in person meetings. So um, I think we're this, the good thing is we're, we're, we're right now, you know, getting uh, getting sort of all our practices in in terms of how do we do meetings virtually and so forth. I think more and more we're just going to have to continue doing uh, what we're doing uh, uh, virtually. And in certain cases where you just absolutely need to have that uh, in-person uh, interaction, you know, um, we're going to need to do those meetings. But I, I feel that there's. 
there's there going to be a, a lot of fewer uh, of that kind of interaction. You know, I want to ask you about, um, you know, being at the office, it was easy just to, you know, stop by somebody's desk and just say hi um, and just keep keep nurturing certain relationships. And right now I'm finding that to be sometimes more difficult because not everyone wants to FaceTime. Not everyone wants to be on a, you know, some people are have that Zoom fatigue where they don't want to be on another video chat. Yeah. And there's a lot of people I actually care about that I haven't really chat chatted with. I've emailed and I, I'm kind of getting the silence because people are just busy and who knows what's happening um, in their lives. And I'm wondering like how you're kind of uh, managing that as you're reaching out to people and some people are just like having a difficult time or they're just swamped with work and they're taking care of their kids or homeschooling and they're just, just not getting back to you and you're just trying to be sensitive to that. Like, yeah. I wonder how you deal with that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. Um, what, what I've been uh, able to do, at, at least with uh, ECS and more and more now with, uh, with uh, all the other BUs within Experian, is that uh, there's more of a wide, a wide adoption of uh, the platform called Slack. You know, mm-hmm. where, where, where you, you have a lot of uh, um, the, uh, the text or, or not text, the, uh, the, 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 it's the messaging kind of a capability yeah. where, where you might not, you know, it, it kind of in a way almost, almost uh, replaces sort of that drive by, right? Where you're just like going to uh, someone's desk saying, hey, I got a question for you. So, so with Slack, you could kind of do uh, the same thing, but but do it through uh, you know through uh, uh, text. And I think Slack does a good job allow you to integrate uh, emojis or uh, you know or JPEGs or or these files that could kind of show some of that 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 personality or that 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 in person sort of a sort of an interaction. And and uh, and maybe you know that that for some of what you you, you mentioned that about those quick uh, quick yeah. questions and so forth, and maybe you can you can use that to, to kind of uh, uh, as a, as a substitute. Um, but but the flip side of this, it's interesting, is that um, what we've been noticing, at least on the technology side, is um, a lot of those drive bys we call them because it is where you know some guys go by your desk and you know there's definitely a, a business uh, a purpose for that. But what happens is that they'll they'll drive by, but they'll start talking to you, and then they're, they're talking about you. You know, hey, I need you to go do this. And next thing you know, it turns into a, a thirty minute uh, a chat about. <laughs> fantasy football <laughs> like that, right? so 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 uh, uh it, it it burns up time for uh and then what we're finding out because those those uh, drive-bys are no longer uh, uh, uh available our our, our production I mean, yeah. our sprint velocity, our production, and all of that, it's actually increased uh, pretty dramatically, you know? And, and also, too, it's an extreme case. I think now people are actually looking uh, uh, at work as almost like leisure because they're at home all the time, right? They're <laughs> like, well, you know, I might as well start coding because what else I got going on, you know? So <laughs> we're seeing that, 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 you know, in terms of our response times for, uh, for uh, incidents, our, our mm-hmm. overall... Uh, um, 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 sprint cadence and sprint sprint accomplishments and story points. All of those things have been uh, have been uh, in- increased uh, uh, pretty actually dramatically. So uh, um, so the, the good news is I think that um, I don't believe that we're ever we're going to sustain that 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 pace. But I think the good news is that uh, we we've been able to to pretty much uh, sort of uh, 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 emphatically address the, uh, the the concern about. Can Experian employees be productive working at home? I think the the answer is yes. It's a resounding yes, and um, uh, and I feel that you know we we could probably uh, even when we are able to go back to the office that we could probably uh, start you know or, or do maybe more of that stuff through Slack and then not have to do the drive bys because uh, you know those takes time you know yeah. they, those take they consume more time so so um, yeah I mean there, there's a, there's a plus uh, to that and there's also the minus is because you know like 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 us I mean, we, we like to interact with people in person right? mm-hmm. those things are you know, there, there's a there's a social aspect that's right a, uh, and then fantasy football is great for developing uh, you know a, 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 a social relationships and 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 and, and sort of a deepens the bonds between our employees and those are good that's only going to make them uh, better uh, better teammates yeah yeah i almost feel like once we do go back to work there's going to be like these like i find myself far more productive 
because there are no drive-bys or I can just like focus on certain tasks and yeah. and because I don't have like um anywhere to go <laughs> right now <laughs> I, when I get up at 4 a.m I was like oh I can get to work I can work during my optimal <laughs> periods you know and um so I definitely so, I, so and I but I'm missing out on the social interaction. So I feel like almost work will be oh I want to go see some people, interact, yeah. have some have some team meetings. Like that would be the reason for work going in for the social aspect and for doing some team meetings and and doing those things for building relationships. But then like getting back home is like okay now I can focus. I can zero in on some certain tasks, do some video calls, do some meetings but um i think initially i was kind of getting uh, a little bit burnt out because i was just like all day uh, so yeah. i was like nothing else to do i'm not can't go anywhere yeah yeah you definitely work a lot harder your home and and uh, but you know you save a lot, a lot of employees they save a uh, commute time yeah. right that 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 hour and a half or that two hours now it directly now is is is, is reflected uh you know, uh, or, or can directly be applied to uh, to to working instead right. of driving, right? That's so, right. yeah. So I think there's a lot to be said about that too. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I know that I know that definitely this is a, this is sort of a um, um, change the, the lenses of a lot of our senior executives on how they're looking at the uh, sort of the, uh, the, the 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 benefits of uh-huh. working at home. Uh-huh. You know, we started off this conversation talking about EQ, and that's closely tied to self-awareness and knowing ourselves. I'm wondering, Jimmy, if you can talk a little bit about self-awareness, um, how you nurture that, especially during right now with everything happening with COVID-19. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, I mean, I think I think you kind of first of all have to, you know, you have to force yourself to take some time for, for yourself, you know, and, and that that could be uh, any anything like uh, uh, anything for uh, self improvement, you know, like uh, uh, my wife and I actually have uh, now have uh, discovered a, a, a yoga on YouTube. <laughs> and and we've been doing that every single day, um, and awesome. and, it, and it's great. Yeah, and it's great, and it, it allows you to be able to uh, to have uh, um, some time to yourself, and also you're doing something very positive for your body and for your mind. So that's something that I feel uh, that that I've been I've been uh, uh, now I've added to my uh, to my routine. Nice. Along with, uh, along with because because uh, you know I I've a, I I'm a, I'm a gym rat, and uh, not having the gym has really been uh, been uh, a, a, a huge loss to my lifestyle. So now, you know, I just got to adapt, you know, be it a uh, uh, YouTube uh, kickboxing, you know, Tai Bo oh, nice. or whatever it may be, or, uh, or hip hop, hip hop for, uh, for, uh, you know, for cardio, whatever it may be, just kind of, kind of, trying to keep, you know, kind of keep that uh, physical, uh, active uh, uh, lifestyle. Uh, in mm-hmm. new uh, eco uh, or in this uh, new COVID climate, and uh, you know, my wife and I will take walks out there when there's a nice day. And it seems that you know, and and whenever we can, we'll take a drive out to uh, the beach. Now, you know, hopefully next couple of weeks, the beaches will start um, opening and and so forth. But but that self awareness, you kind of have to make sure you factor, you give yourself some time, and then at the same time too, is just making sure that you're still out there interacting with people, be it, you know, be it, uh, um, actually tonight we're doing a uh, virtual wine tasting with one of our vendors. And then, and then, you know, you, you, you get that interaction, you get that feedback, you know, from, uh, from others. And I think uh, you kind of have to do that because if you don't, you become too, uh, um, um, isolated. And also you become too, uh, you know, too, uh, um, um, you know, too idle and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's only, you know, it's only going to sort of make your uh, experience, uh, 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 this experience more, uh, more challenging. And, I'll, and look, I mean, and you guys, uh, some of you guys know that, you know, I'm a very, I'm also an active uh, 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 advocate for Aspire ERG. And look, there's a, there's, there's folks that uh, uh, unfortunately have a physical and mental well-being challenges and in this environment if you don't if you don't really focus on the the the, the self-awareness and then really making sure that you're not you're not uh, sacrificing that right, right now you could you could be in a you know you can be in a, a a deeper, a deeper depression, or, or you could have more anxiety. So I think uh, it's, it's even more important that that uh, for a certain segment of our uh, 
of our uh, uh, employees that that they really uh, they really make a uh, uh, take a conscious uh, take take some effort in, in this area. Well, I, I just love Jimmy that you are so intentional about the self care. Like you have because like I'm kind of like you. Like I love going to the gym, and right now the gyms are closed, and like I miss that place to go to like get my workout and i love that you are intentional about i'm gonna have yoga as part of my schedule i'm gonna be doing these different activities um, have you always been very intentional about uh, self-care yeah i i think i have i mean I'll, i mean I, that's one of the things that uh I, i'll be honest it's uh it's it, it's something that I, I i had to sort of adapt when I moved to uh, the United States, the states uh, in in in, uh, in Hong Kong, I was a lot less about that. It was it was more of you know because the, the culture, the Asian culture, is more about education. It's it's in terms of sort of the self awareness, individuality, and all of that. That's secondary to happiness, so to speak, right? <laughs> It's all about, you know, it's all about academic achievements. But when I came over here uh, and, and to the States, I uh, you know, immediately introduced to uh, sports and all of those things that really sort of bring out that element, you know, in, in, in an individual. So, uh, uh, but, but once I sort of uh, got exposed to it, I love it, you know, you, you, uh, you know, you, you uh, and, and I feel that, uh, that, that actually helped me quite a bit to, uh, to uh, um, um, my career, my career growth. And, uh, and and being the uh, the leader that I am today, all of those things, I, 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 that 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 element has really been a uh, a positive factor. And I guess my, my very last question um, is around EQ for those listening in, because the very beginning of the conversation was all about how important EQ is for business, business success. Uh, just some, I guess, last minute tips for those who have never really thought much about EQ. Maybe they're just starting their careers and. They're really good at the technical side of their job, um, highly skilled. They've gotten excellent grades, uh, super productive employees, but the EQ part is something they've never really uh, thought too much about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would say the, 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 the quick thing about EQ is it's, it's actually a pretty uh, a simple concept is that, you know, it, it, it's about, it's about uh, having empathy. That's really the key is that, that there is more about sort of uh, 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 the individual goals or individual rewards. So if we could, if we could have a little bit of, 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 of start practicing a more uh, empathy, and and that's just to take, making some effort to really sort of understand the uh, other perspective. I should start off with that, and then you don't have to do that just at work. Do it at home. You know, I think that empathy is something that you know. I mean, in, in our COVID climate, if everyone could have a little bit more empathy for each other. I think it could make this uh, make this uh, situation, this crisis, uh, a lot easier to handle. So uh, I'll start off with that simple concept. Awesome. All right, Jimmy, do you have any last words for our listeners and our future leaders out there? Mm, yeah, well, hey, I, for, first of all, I, I want to thank you. Mike and Patty for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about these uh, these topics, and I feel that uh, uh, you know um, um, we have a lot of great leaders, and and we have a lot of uh, uh, great leaders uh, in training and experience. And I feel that uh, um, you know leveraging if you're an employee and experience that you leverage these type of. Uh, of, of, of segments, these type, type of uh, platforms, and, and level up is a great example to uh, to uh, uh, develop your skills and and to, to, to get the uh, the uh, the different uh, perspectives from our uh, you know season managers and and from some of our leaders. Um, you know, I mean, look, we're, we're it, it, it definitely it definitely you know the the the, the results are there. I mean, we're uh, we're always the the one two top uh, workplace in uh, in Orange County, and I feel that you know we we make a lot of effort. Uh, the executives invest a lot of uh, time and 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 money in terms of uh, of, of really developing the. Uh, the, the, the culture in uh, in experience to, to allow us to do that. So uh, yeah, I put, uh, I hope that everyone takes advantage of all of the great uh, uh, platforms and tools that we have out there. Thank you so much, Jimmy. This was a really good conversation. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. Yes. Have a nice weekend, guys. Thank you. Thanks. You too. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of Level Up. If you'd like to see a summary of today's show, you can go to the Experian blog. The short URL is just ex.pn slash level up.
If you found any of the information today helpful, please consider supporting us by hitting subscribe or leaving us a review. Thanks for dropping in and giving us a listen, and we hope to see you again for our next episode.